Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hey there, kids. It's awesome to see y'all. Did you do something to your hair? I like it. It's like a cool 70s astronaut vibe. I dig it. Anywho, I'm here at home today getting ready for something very, very exciting. I have the whole day in front of me. I can do whatever I want. Just imagine it. I can go skydiving. <laughs> or I could go to a football game. Woo! Go football team! Go sports! I love sports! Yeah! I can go to the opera. I could go to the ocean. Mm. The world is my oyster. Or if you're allergic to shellfish, then the world could be your hush puppy. I'm telling you, today is the perfect day. Nothing, and I mean nothing could go wrong. Oh, goodness, I thought I'd turn this off. Ah! No, this can't be, this can't happen. I, I, I can't believe it. Yo, my day is ruined. I just got word that it's Hoogan Duber season. Y'all don't know what a Hoogan Duber is? Okay, well, you're lucky. A Hoogan Duber is an exotic bird here in Florida. They're super colorful and really pretty to look at, but don't let that fool you. They'll fly in your hair and mess it all up. So bad to the point that you just have to shake it all off. When they flap their wings, they put out this terrible smell. It stinks up the whole neighborhood. And if that isn't bad enough, I'm allergic to them. <sighs> this is awful. I wonder how long they'll be outside. Let's see. Are you kidding? It says who can do burst nests in new areas up to four weeks? Oh no, I'm stuck in my house for weeks. This is terrible. <sighs> what am I gonna do? Maybe I'll watch some TV. Huh, it's not working. Maybe it's voice activated. Turn on. Hey, don't yell at me. Ah! Well, no TV. I just don't know what to do. I mean, I could try reading, but I don't like to read, but I, mm, that, mm, that. Well, it's either that or contemplate every decision I've ever made and fall into a deep hibernation. Reading it is. Now, what to read, what to read. All right, well, let's just pick a chapter of the Bible. But first, I'm going to ask God to really help me dive into this Bible. <sighs> okay, here we go. Holy moly, where am I? What is this? What happened? Hi, Carl. Ah, who are you? What do you want? What do you want, mysterious woman? Please don't hurt me. Easy, Carl. Relax. I'm Grace. I only know one Grace, and that's the Grace that Jesus offers. That's it. Why are you here? How do you know my name? Where am I? Well, to answer your first question, I'm here because you're here. Huh? Well, you asked God to help you dive into your reading, so that's exactly what happened. You dove into the Bible story. We are where the Bible story takes place. I know, first time story divers tend to get a little disoriented, so I'm here to help. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying we're back in time to when the Bible story happened? The actual Bible story? Sort of. Somewhere between a dream and reality. Like a fantasy world. This is where you can learn about some of the greatest stories in the Bible, but truly experience it like no other story before. Wow, that's incredible. So, where am I? Let me take a look. Well, if I'm reading this right, I believe you are in the book of Luke chapter 4. What happens then? Let me see. Oh yeah, this is a story of when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. No way! I love that story. Really? <laughs> me too. It's a great story. Well, walk me through it anyway. This story takes place right before Jesus began his ministry. He was probably around 30 years old. Wow, so what was Jesus doing in the wilderness? Seems like he had a pretty busy schedule. 
Oh, for sure. You wouldn't believe how much he would be doing for the next three years of his life, but he felt it was very important to take some space and be by himself. How long was Jesus out here again? Would you believe me if I said 40 days? 40 days? That's wild. I've only been here for a few minutes and I'm not sure I like it here. Did Jesus have to hunt for food when he was out here or did he like pack a couple of PB and J's? Well, if being out in the wilderness wasn't tough enough already, Jesus decided to fast from food the whole time he was out there. Oh, nice. So like McDonald's or Chick-fil-A? Do they deliver out here? I'm getting hungry. You want anything? Huh? Oh, no, Carl, not fast food. Jesus fasted from food, as in he chose not to eat while he was out there in the wilderness. Are you kidding me? No food? I can't go 10 minutes without having food. So Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness without any food. That's quite the accomplishment. Oh, but don't you remember? That's not all. While Jesus was out in the wilderness, he was faced with some really tough challenges. Something more challenging than not eating for 40 days and sleeping outside? I know it seems unlikely, but yes. You see, Jesus was tempted several times during the story. Wait, Jesus was tempted? Just like how we are tempted? Like the times when we get the urge to do something that we shouldn't do? Exactly! Jesus was tempted to turn a rock into bread so he could finally have something to eat. But he chose not to do it because fasting was very important to Jesus. Wow! First off, a rock into bread. If I was tempted like that, I don't know if I could have been strong enough to say no! Don't eat the rock, Carl! Jesus said to the devil in Luke 4.4 4, that people should not live on bread alone. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot of carbs. No, Jesus meant that obeying God was the most important thing. So Jesus stayed focused on God instead of giving in to what the devil told him to do. But right after that, it says Jesus was tempted again. How? He was brought up so he could see all the kingdoms in the world and was told that all of it would be given to him and he would be in charge of all the people in those kingdoms. All he had to do was just say the word. What did he do? He said this, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Man, being out here, I can only imagine how tough it was for Jesus. I mean, for him to turn down the glory that was being offered so he could stop suffering and just have it easy. Was that it? Not yet. The devil tempted him one last time by telling Jesus to jump off the highest point of the temple. What? Why? The devil was testing him because if Jesus was really the son of God, of course God wouldn't let Jesus get hurt. God would probably send angels to rescue him. Oh, so then Jesus should have done it to prove that he was God's son. No, Jesus didn't fall for the devil's tricks. Jesus knew the devil was twisting God's words and trying to make Jesus doubt God's power and love. So Jesus said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Wait, I'm noticing a pattern. Wasn't everything that Jesus said directly from the Old Testament? Yep. You see, God gave us the scriptures for many reasons, but one of them is to do exactly what Jesus used it for. Well, what was that? To fight temptation. God knows we will face many challenges in this world, but God also knows we can use the Bible to fight off anything that comes our way. Even hunger, anger, bad thoughts, and sadness? Yes, all of those. All we have to do is read God's story. Well, hey there, kids. Wasn't that story a page turner? <laughs> the Bible never ceases to amaze me. We heard about Jesus fighting temptation and overcoming it. I bet it's cool to hear that God can prepare us to fight temptation too. Now, today's big idea is God prepares us to fight temptation. Now, let's say it out loud on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. God prepares us to fight temptation. Yay, great job, kids. Now, 
I'm going to hold on to this promise because I've been tempted lately. It's kind of normal to be tempted, but God prepares us to fight temptation. All right, count on God this week, okay, friends? See you next week. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of...